Hey, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to Genesis ROM Hacking. In the last video, I showed you my my scheme for finding free RAM addresses, but I also mentioned that I got an ace up my sleeve, and that ace is the SRAM. So, the Wars of the Eternal Sun, well, first of all, the Genesis has about, you can usually have about 64K SRAM. Uh, so exactly the same amount as you have in the RAM. And I've mentioned before, like there, it overlaps a bit with the cartridge if your cartridge is very big, but ours, even with the extension, goes just up to where the SRAM is. So there's no overlap, no problem there. Now, the Genesis, or not the Genesis, the Warriors of the Eternal Sun only uses uh, a quarter of what is available. So it is only using, well, it's, it's tricky, but it's, it's only using 16K of the SRAM memory space. So that means we got 48K available to us. And this memory is awesome because uh, not only is it memory that we can read to and write from, it persists between play sessions. So we could do some fun stuff there. Uh, but we wanna experiment with it a bit. So let's just play around um, reading and writing from the memory. So I'll go back to our old friend Melee Accuracy because I can trigger that one easily enough. And uh, let's try to write and read from the SRAM. So like I said, the first quarter of SRAM space is taken up by the actual cartridge. Uh, so we can start at 204000. And we're going to move this long address pointed to here into D0. Now let's move the value 69 hex into that same address. We'll try to write there. And then we're going to try to read from it once again. All right, so I'm going to export this and uh, see if we can't uh, do some reading and writing to from the SRAM. All right, so let's set our breakpoint at the beginning of melee accuracy, and I will be back when we've got an encounter. All right, here we are. Come at me, bro. So we are going to move a value into memory here. Well, let's take a look at what is in that memory, first of all. Okay, so it looks like a whole bunch of garbo. Uh, we step over, we're going to load into D0. So we do load the 2F, which is what we'd expect. Now we're going to store. Nothing happened. And then we load again into D0 and... Well, that's odd. This one's address is wrong. I must have typed in the, uh, the mnemonic incorrectly. But regardless of that, we see that our write did not affect this. We can read, but we cannot write there. So, what's the problem? Well, if we take a look at error log, we see here that it's actually using the header. It says SRAM detected from header, start location 20001 and length of 3FFF. So that basically jives with what I understand about Warriors of the Eternal Sun. It declares what SRAM region it has and the emulator is strictly respecting that. So, this means we probably need to change the header. So online you can find a reference to what bytes in the header mean what, and if we look at starting at 1B0, there are 12 bytes that uh, correspond to extra memory. And then here, yeah, so we have a bunch of entries in a structure like this. First two are just a signature, RA. Then you have one BAM RAM byte which says the RAM type a fixed byte, and then you have the start address and the end address. So these ones we want to change. But also, so there is a RAM type, and there's actually a bunch of different ones in here. You can have 8-bit RAM, you can have 16-bit RAM. And here it says whether it saves or not, so whether it's volatile. And I don't, I don't know of any that don't have a battery backup for their SRAM, so I think it's always going to be one of these. And Usually it's 8-bit, but actually we want 16-bit. So if it's 8-bit, um, what happens is for every two bytes, only one you can read to and write from, and it's either going to be the even one or the odd one. But that means that if you use, and this is actually what uh, Warriors of Eternal Sun does, if you use 16K of memory space, you only get 8K of storage, but we want the full storage. So we're going to be accessing 16-bit. So that means that we should set this byte to E0, and we should set the end address to 7FFF. Okay, so let's find this header. Yeah, I see the problem here, by the way. This is completely wrong. This should be 204000. And come in. 
There we go. Okay, so we'll fix that, but we have to go up to our ROM header. Go! So the header starts, I think, at 100. Yeah, it says Sega Genesis, and if we scroll down to 1B something, yeah, 1B0, we can see, what's this? What's this here? Well, Chili's been busy. I created a structure for the, the RAM part of the ROM header. So now it's very easy and readable here. We can see this bit uh, is always set. This bit controls whether it's saving RAM. This bit controls whether it's 8-bit, odd or even. So what do we want to change? Well, we want to change this one here. And we want to make this 16-bit. We want to turn that into... I want to turn this 8-bit into 16-bit. So we want to change this RAM access to E0, and we want to change this address to 7FFF. Now the problem is we can't actually change it in here. It sucks. It really sucks, but the, the editor doesn't allow you to patch the data when it's in a structure like this, as far as I can tell. So that's garbage. Luckily, I can cross-reference in my byte editor and get the job done. So. Uh, what do we have this? This F8 should be an E0. So let's turn that into E0. And you can see that this one automatically adjusts, which is nice. At least it reflects this one automatically. So now we see is 8-bit is false, is odd is false. Now if we find our address here, we want to turn this 3F into a 7F. Uh, so that changed this here, and that is good to go. We should be able to save and export. All right, we back. Let's hit our breakpoint here, and let's go find an encounter. You might notice already that the, the memory address has now been all filled with FFFF, which indicates that that is actually being allocated as SRAM space. All right, we snake boy now. Attack. Okay, so we're going to load from the memory address. We should put an FF into our D0. Sounds vaguely lewd, but... We'll live with it. Now we're going to store 4 or 5 hex. Son of a bitch, this put it in the wrong address. This was the wrong... Was this the wrong the whole time? Ah, this is so annoying. Okay, we back. Now it better be fixed. Okay, all the addresses look correct. So again, we move into D0. Make sure I'm in the right window. Yeah. Now we're going to store 4 or 5 into memory. And we get 4 or 5 in here. A little strange. And then when we load it... 4, 5 goes into D0, so we can round trip our data to the SRAM, no problem. Now, like I showed you, I talked about this, but um, the RAM is generally 8-bit, and the emulator, the way it works, is even in 16-bit mode, if you write a single byte, it is going to duplicate that to both, um, both of these in the 16-bit word. And that's just, the way, that's just the way it is. And what that means is that we have to be very careful about how we access things, especially things of byte size, like byte strings or whatever. It's going to be tricky to read and write them from memory. You're going to have to worry about your alignment and packing them together into 16-bit. Because we basically, we can't do byte accesses. Because if you write a byte into either of these two, it's going to overwrite the other one. Um, so that means that working with SRAM is potentially a little annoying and that is why I am still looking at trying to find RAM regions. Uh, but the SRAM is, is a huge amount of memory that we can potentially access and we can persist save data in there as well. So it's, it's definitely something that I want to exploit. Now there is one more thing that might be a problem. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but potentially it could be, and that is speed. So I think typically SRAM maybe ran at a slower speed than the normal. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. But um, if it did, and if the emulator emulates that speed difference, then that means that if we are using SRAM like normal RAM, it might slow our routines down uh, considerably. So I'd like to do a test just to see the speed difference, if any, between RAM and SRAM. All right, let's do this speed test here. I got a couple of pointers to memory. One is pointing into, you know, in the middle of the RAM, basically. And the other is pointing to the start of our SRAM region. I've got a little function here, do memory speed test. Takes in a pointer and it's just going to write a, yeah, a thousand bytes. It's going to write them as D words, 32-bit values. And then I export two functions that do the memory speed test using the RAM pointer and the SRAM pointer. Very simple. Now we want to, of course, 
examine our extension listing to see if it's doing what we expect. There's no big differences between the two routines. So you see here test RAM, it's loading an address into A0 and then it's doing a long move, uh, basically adding four, moving to the next address, doing a comparison and then jumping back. So here's your loop. And where is the other one? Test SRAM here, again, move an address and we have our loop. So this should be fine. Now, after importing that new code, we can modify our melee accuracy to call both of those functions. So first we test the RAM and then we test the SRAM. All right, so I got my breakpoint set here. We're gonna see, yeah, it blocks. And it is jumping to two extension functions. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a time point. This is an emulated time. Uh, then we're going to step over, take another time point, and we step over, and we take a third time point. And so now we should be able to take the difference between these time points here and determine how much time was spent on the RAM versus how much time was spent on the SRAM. So first let's look at the RAM. It would be this time minus this time equals, so 5881531 milliseconds. Now let's do the time for the SRAM. Copy this one. And it is almost exactly the same, although looks like a bit of a rounding error here. I'm seeing a one micro nano picosecond difference. <laughs> I think we can safely say that they are about exactly the same. So there's no difference doing SRAM versus RAM access, and that's a, that's a beautiful thing to hear. And also I can do 32-bit uh, reads and writes. Uh, looks like no problem, although we could just examine to make sure. Now we see here it's writing 00204000 and then 00204004, and that is correct because if you look at what I'm doing in the code here, I'm for each time I write into the pointer, I'm writing the address and then I'm incrementing that address. So it should be the address of those four bytes. So yeah, I can do long accesses exactly the same speed. The only difference between SRAM and RAM is you can't read or write properly single bytes. That's the only difference. And it's a big one. Admittedly, it is a big one. But either way, this is going to be a really good tool in our toolbox. And that's going to about do it for this video. In the next one, we are going to look at some of the other things that I'm going to be watching while I play through this game. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more Genesis ROM hacking. Warriors of the Eternal Sun.